talk about the periodic table. The periodic table is your best friend. It is a wonderful resource to have, and it's, it's your cheat sheet. You get to have it most of the time, most of the time in chemistry. So what's so important about the periodic table? Well, it contains all of the elements that make up everything around us, everything in the universe. It's contained here. This may be a little older version, but there, there are newer versions out there, and uh, we'll deal with those a little bit later. But the elements are grouped to form compounds. So everything in the universe is either one of these elements, elements put together in a certain way, in a fixed way to form compounds, or it is a mixture of compounds and elements put together. So everything in the universe works like that. So it's a pretty important thing to know. Now, these elements are placed in this periodic table, who, by the way, a fellow by the name of Mendeleev, very smart guy, organized. But we'll talk more about that a little later on. For now, let's focus on a couple of things. All right, the colors. Take a look at the colors. The black elements, or the letters that are in black, represent the solids. The, these two that are in blue represent the liquids, the only liquids in the element form. And these red ones are gases. So that's what the, those colors represent. Now, all, not all periodic tables will be colored like this, but what you need to do is to memorize these elements and they, because they're very important and you will know, uh, you will need to know this information even though the periodic table may have, not have colors on it. All right, second level of organization is that they're organized in metals and non-metals. Notice that there's a zigzag line here. This zigzag line divides the metals on the left hand side, the non-metals on the right hand side. The ones touching the zigzag line, uh, for the most part, are the metalloids. We'll deal with those a little later. The horizontal lines of the periodic table are known as periods. And later on you're going to find that those periods are representative or of the location of the electrons but we don't have to worry about that. Those are called energy levels. For now, these are the periods. Period one, two, three, four, and so on. Further organization, the vertical rows, okay, or columns. These are called families. This first family is known as the alkali metals, excluding hydrogen because hydrogen is in a family all its own. It's kind of a unique guy, like a loner. But for now, we are gonna place it here. These are the alkaline earth metals. These guys right here in the middle are the transition metals. Boron family, carbon family, nitrogen family, oxygen family, halogens, and these are the noble gases. So there you have the organization of the periodic table. One more thing we're going to talk about. The symbols. Each of these elements has, of course, a name and a symbol by which it goes. The elements are named after places, things, or even people. We're going to do a lot more with that in the classroom. Notice that the first letter of each element is capitalized. The second letter is not. Some elements have only one letter representing the element. Some have two letters. 
but the second one is not capitalized. Now, some are pretty intuitive. For example, H for hydrogen, B for boron, Li for lithium, Ca for calcium, but some others are not. For example, K is potassium. Hmm, wonder why that is. And mm, let's say silver is Ag. The reason why this is so, Ag is argentum. Let's look at gold, for example. Gold is AU. It is the word aurum is Latin, the Latin word for gold. So that's why we say the symbol is AU for gold. One of my former students, I will never forget him, he used to say, I remember the symbol of gold because if I go up to someone, I would go, hey you, give me some gold. That's a way he remembered it. You may find many, many other ways to remember some of these elements. And we will be working that in on that in class. All right, another example would be lead, PB. It is PB for plumbum, which it's lead. Lead pipes are made of plumbum, or are called plumbum. So, but you may want to remember it as one of my other students in the later class said, I remember PB because it's peanut butter. Peanut butter, when you eat it, it makes you feel like lead. I look forward to some of the ways you are going to make associations to remember your elements. Have a great day.